Hello Akron fans, and welcome to this short tutorial video on how to get started with the game. So when you first start up the game, you'll see this screen. To create a new player profile, just type in whatever name you want, hit OK, and then you can log in. When you select it, you can also choose to use the profile as default to avoid the screen in future. Once we log in, you find several buttons along the left hand side for playing the game, and the community chat on the right side. We'll cover that later. First button is the campaign button that allows you to play the main single player, or if you've beaten it already, you can choose a mission and start there. It's a fairly long campaign, as you can see. Then you can also go to the load save area to load a replay from all the replays you may have saved if you choose to save replays, or downloaded replays. You can also load save games from here as well. You can then Next button is Quick Play. Quick Play gives you the option to play single player by yourself or against AI and all different maps that come with the game and whatever maps you may have downloaded. From here you can choose to toggle AI on or off for each player slot. You can also choose the various options for pre-game lobby, different settings for the game itself. Then Multiplayer is quite similar to Quick Play. You have the same idea with Lobby. You simply need to log in with your password for whatever Acron game account you have. Or if you're using Steam, this is automatic. And upon logging in, you automatically will connect to the community chat. Feel free to say hi, or assuming that tier the current IRC bot is on, type list online to find out all the players who are online. You can also type list ready to see who's ready to play a game. And if there are games, you can join them. If not, you can host them. Much like Quick Play, you can, once again, toggle AI on and off if you need the, them, although you'll often want other players. And you can also change the pre-game settings. From here, biggest thing is settings. You may want to have your stuff configured a bit differently than the defaults. Settings from the top to bottom. First one chooses whether or not to display time waves on the timeline. Then advanced timeline UI chooses whether or not those time waves are colored and whether you have other timeline UI information. So you can show objective lines. You can show unit stats all the time. You can have a radial menu. You can turn tooltips on or off for hovering over things. You can hide camera pan arrows. Showing FPS lets you know how much how well your Acron is performing in game. If you want, you can have campaign levels auto save to make it a bit easier to play through the campaign without having to worry about saving all the time. Saving replays automatically rather than having to turn on that setting every single game. And if you want, you can have unit gauge to show the numerical values rather than the type by default. Though if you hover over the indicator for value or type, it will switch to the other representation. There are also hotkey settings. Some are per species and some are between species. Various commands and of course UI is also global. As for graphics, the next setting, you will want to change this around if you're having frame rate issues or if you just want the game to look a little bit nicer. Settings are mostly pretty straightforward. You can have the full screen. You can show a default cursor, an OS cursor, if you're having lag, if your frame rate is too low. If your frame rate is too high, you can turn on vertical sync or let it be up to the drivers if you set it to default. The remaining graphic settings are nicely encapsulated in single button press, so if you don't care about specifics, you can just choose a setting that suits you, or if you want to be a bit more fine-grained, you can go with the custom. You choose a number of lights, you can choose shadow detail, both in terms of the size of texture and the whether the edges are blurred. Nastrophic levels controls texture filtering at an angle, and anti-aliasing makes edges a bit softer, a bit less harsh. Bloom and depth of field are nice little post-processing effects, which just added the experience a little bit. And per pixel lighting quality is a little bit hard to explain, though. Images demonstrate a bit better. You can have it off, you can have specular lighting on, normal mapping on, or parallax occlusion mapping on. Though the main difference between normal mapping and parallax occlusion mapping is simply the illusion of depth on surfaces with the mapping. It's a little bit harder to show in images, though. The difference is much more subtle. And lastly, you can go to the level editor, either start a new level, main thing you need to do is to make a new map from there, or you can load an existing level and play around with that. So now let's start getting into the game itself. When you start out, the first thing you see is a species selector. This allows you to choose whatever species you'd like. You can choose Human, Grekim, Vekir, or if you don't care, you can just go random. Let's start with Human. So Humans start out with three resource processors. Start out with an importer for getting reserves for building units. 
They also start out with two Marines and a Special Ops. The Special Ops is basically early muscle and healer, while the Marines are your builder unit, as well as also being a bit of a muscle. They can build all the basic structures. Armories and factories are going to be your biggest concerns here. Armories get you more infantry and tech, while factories get you the vehicles you need and mechs for further teching up. Mechs build the Macrofab, which is the next stage of the CISO game. Once you get the factory up, you will see that there are a few units you can build and a few units you cannot build. The mech, Lancer, and HHC can be built right away, but the Tornade and Tank require machinery. So it's, if you get a mech, you can then go on and build a Macrofab. Mechs can also build other units. They can build the... or building rather. They can build the gates if you have gate tech, and they can build carriers if you have aerospace and a comp center. Now, next, let's go on to Grekim. Now, Grekim is fairly different in the way they are set up, though they start up pretty similarly. Three resource processors, and a Sepi and Faro pair, as well as an Arcticus, the Arcticus being used for getting the early units, but primarily is used as a meat shield. You can just relocate it over to the front. Most players will do this so that when opponents go and attack move in, it just hits the Arcticus rather than the squishy units behind it. The Sepi can Progenerate, as can the Faro, as can all base and pod class Grekim units, they progenerate to produce other units. However, you need to have units both of the opposite gender to the remaining unit you want. Grekim has three genders, Octo, Sepi, and Faro. If you have all three progenerating together, then you can produce all the units of that unit's class or the class above. So base class units produce base and pod class, while pod class units produce the pod and legal class, assuming you have the legal class upgrade. You also will need to get a Spire if you want to produce any of the air units, which for the pod class is Sepipod and Faropod. The Octopod can be produced right off the bat, and very frequently is as an early defense. But to get the Spire, you need to build a Sepi, and from that Sepi you need to build a Reef, the Reef being the Grecum tech structure. And from there you need to get advanced structures, and that will allow you to build a Spire. The Reef is also a healing structure, so it's very commonly built in pairs or triads just to nicely heal up the entire base and make sure nothing takes too much damage, at least early on. Octos can also be used to build resource processors, which is how you continue to get more and more resources. And once we have the, set, the reef up and we have advanced structures, we can get a faro and use that faro to build a spire. Once the spire is there, you can build pod class units besides the octopod and from there build legal class units. On to the Vec Gear. The Vec Gear are, once again, fairly different. They start out with their three basic infantry, the Zion Beer, Teth Fear, and Shin Beer. Zion Beer is good against Crown, Teth against Air, and Shin is just general ranged, very long range infantry unit. The Annex can be used to get tech and infantry, while the Shin Beer builds foundations, the Zion Beer builds your resource processors, and the Teth Beer builds comms hubs. Very useful for scouting, but not something that's necessary in an early build. The Annex can also build foundations adjacent to it, and this is primarily how you will build new buildings. You build a foundation, and then you develop that foundation into a new building once it's done. You can also have Shin Beers build foundations in the middle of nowhere if you don't have a base set up there yet. Commonly, when building a foundation, the very first foundation you'll build will turn into a depot, which is the most useful building for Vekir that builds all their vehicles and allows them to heal vehicles as well. If you have vehicles that are damaged, you can bring them back and have them jump into the depot. Though if you have just raw foundations lining your base, they can also heal units. And any nearby Veer class can go into the depot to pilot as well. If you do it this way, you don't have to pay for the Veer class cost, so it reduces the cost by LC in time somewhat. Anyway, hope that was helpful for getting started with the game. You can, if you're interested in learning more, you can watch more of my videos, subscribe if you want to know when they come up, or follow me on Twitch for the new live streams. Thank you for watching.